Hi teachers, today's video is about a writing project that we've been working on in fifth grade. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Melanie Howell and I have been a classroom teacher for more than 20 years. Uh, if you find this video helpful, I hope you will consider subscribing and um, hitting the bell notification so that you'll always get future videos. All right, so our writing project. We have been in school about seven weeks and our first creative writing project is one that incorporates a lot of the skills that we've been working on in our language arts classes for the past seven weeks. So um, the way I start off is a picture prompt. It's early in the year and I don't want the kids to feel like they don't have anything to write about or they don't have an idea of what to write about because at this point I need them to get words on a page so I can sort of really get an understanding of where where they are in their creative writing. So we uh, show them this picture prompt and to this week it was, I found this picture on Pinterest, it, a picture of like six squirrels and they have lightsabers and they're fighting next to a tree. So because of the lightsabers, that gives prior knowledge um, from Star Wars. And as soon as they see that, of course, it's, you know, they're all excited because they, oh, I have so many ideas. I want this, I want this. You know, even if they model it after the movie, at this point, I don't really care. I just, again, you know, what I'm grading is not their creativity. I'm grading the different things that we've been studying that will actually, that's what will be on the rubric. So again, I let them get excited about the idea and this is where I say, okay, but before you can start your story, fifth grade, I'm sorry, but you're officially too old to just sit down and start writing a story without planning it out first. And that's when I remind them that we have studied the plot diagram and the different components of the plot diagram. And I explain that a lot of times when you're planning a story, you think of the most exciting thing you want to have happen in the story first, and that's the climax. So if they want to sort of brainstorm ideas for the climax and write those out, they can do that and then work backwards or and then work towards the resolution and then work backwards towards how they want to do it. That's fine with me. Some kids like to work that way. Other kids are super detail oriented and they love the process of naming all of their characters. They need to name everybody first. So if they want to start at the beginning, that's okay with me as well. Uh, we do have some creative writing rules and that is, I explained to them, if you want to include the names of your friends in your story, you have to get permission to do that. And if you are going to make one of your friends the bad guy, you have to say, hey Johnny, would you like to be in my story? I need you to be the bad guy and Johnny's okay with that, I'm okay with that. We also have another rule that your solution to the conflict cannot be and then everyone died because these are 10 year olds and every year somebody wants that to be uh, the end of the story and then everyone died. So we make a rule that you can't do that. Other than that, they start you know, drawing out the map of how their story is going to go. And then I sort of look over it and then they can write their story. And I don't even use the word first draft because that freaks most little guys out. And so I'll just say, okay, you can write your story. And then, you know, you've always got speedy quick kid. So of course he writes his story so fast and he can't wait to turn it in and be done or share it with his friends. So again, the rule is before you can officially be done, you need to take your story, pick a friend, take your story, go out in the hall for just a minute and read it to your friend. So friend will probably, as well, friend will probably say, I don't understand this, I don't understand that, and the child will do some revisions. But even more likely than that is the child so excited and has probably written it too fast. So as he reads this first draft, he will notice that he's left things out. If the friend doesn't point it out, he'll probably notice it himself and he'll make some revisions. Okay, so let's say you get through this process, Speedy Quick Kid comes in and says, okay, I read it to my friend, I'm all done. And then I'll say, oh, wait a second, you're not quite done. Now, what I want you to do is pick another friend and 
get that, go out in the hall and get your friend to read your paper to you and you can't see the paper, only the friend can see the paper. Because if the child has to listen to his story come out of someone else's mouth, that's a whole new set of revisions that happen. But once the child has made these two sort of informal revisions, um, a lot of times they'll say, all right, here, I've done this, now what? And as more kids, you know, start to get through this process, I'll say, oh, guys, guess what? I'm gonna throw you a curveball right here at the end. Now I need everyone to, and this is an opportunity for me to um, work in some of the other skills that we've been working on in language arts. And I'll say, um, for example, remember when we read the book um, Freak the Mighty and I just loved how the author wrote the character description of Loretta Lee and how it really painted a picture in my mind of what that character looked like. Well now what I need you to do is I need you to go back into your story and figure out a way to add a baby squirrel. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I need every story to have a baby squirrel. So then they have to go in, they have to kind of pull their plot apart, think about how they could get a baby in the plot. You know, this is just, higher order thinking. I mean, it's just, you know, trying to figure out how to alter what they have without starting over because there's always somebody that, that'll think they have to start over and you're like, no, 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 no. Just figure out a way to work it in. We've also, up, at, up until this point, we've also studied ways that authors, of course, stretch out the smaller moments and work on skills. And we have an anchor chart hanging in the room about ways to develop setting, ways to develop characters. So I'll say, oh yeah, now I need everyone to add a smell. Add a smell to your story. You know, and one kid was having, in his story, he had a barbecue, so he talked about the smell of the barbecue. And one kid had a trash can and worked in a sentence about the smell of the trash can. And then I remind them about adding, you know, how putting the sense, different senses in just enhances your writing. Um, and I know a lot of people will think that it's not fair of me not to put all of this on the rubric ahead of time, but for their first story, I think that rubric would be intimidating for some of, for most of my kids. And so it doesn't seem as daunting if I just sort of slowly include more things that I want. Um, now they do know ahead of time the things like grammar skills that we've been working on that I'll put in. I'll say, okay, now when you write this paper, I need two compound sentences that are highlighted in green, or I need you know, six adjectives that are highlighted in yellow. And like I said, the rubric at the end, I'm really grading them on their ability to follow all of the directions. And, you know, is their compound sentence correct? Are their adjectives correct? I'm Again, I'm not grading their creativity, the plot of their story. I'm just looking to make sure that there is a plot, that there is a climax, that there is a resolution, those kinds of things. But but there's a lot of pride that's taken on the day that we share our stories with the class. Kids who are normally very timid about their writing uh, have really written more than they've ever written. Even, oh, I do have a minimum words, like they have to have 250 words. And we're one-to-one -one with Chromebooks, so I teach them how to use word count, so they are completely fascinated with the number of words. So 250 words is a lot for some kids, but 250 words also flies by super fast for a lot of kids. And they're like, holy moly, I'm already on 350 words or whatever it might be. Um, it's a real confidence booster. And again, I'm thrilled if this story is more than they've, you know, if the first story of fifth grade is more than they've ever written before, I mean, how happy am I? That's fantastic. And it's early in the year and we're only gonna build from here. That's my version of what we've done in writing this week. And it's been a fun week. They've enjoyed it. It didn't feel like just dragging them through the writing process making writing painful. I want them, they need to be convinced that it's something they can enjoy before it gets too hard. Um, because then they, 
I build trust with the kids and they trust me, they trust that I they trust the fact that I have faith in them that they can do it. And then therefore when I introduce um, five paragraph essays and, and different things that are more formal and are more difficult, it doesn't seem as big and scary and hard because, well, if you believe I can do it, then maybe it'll be okay. But really, it's taken me a lot of years to sort of work out this formula and um, it works for me and I'm happy with it. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you found this video helpful or even just entertaining, I hope you will consider subscribing. Bye, teacher.